Welcome into the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime. Jamie McCracken, Carly Bell, both on the road. I'm Josh McKinney hanging out with you for the next 25 minutes. Carly was in Somerset. Jamie was in Lexington for the season opener for the number two Kentucky Wildcats. And that is where we begin at Rupp Arena with the Cats and Stephen F. Austin. Head coach John Calipari and his basketball cats opening the season up with the Lumberjacks who were an NCAA tournament team last year. First half, Derek Willis owning the floor on the inbounds pass, catches, turns, shoots, plus the foul, and then it's the cats on the break. Willis again creating from the same spot. How about the little turn, the little baseline jumper? We have heard now how good this team will be defensively from Cal. Isaac Humphreys deflects the ball. Willis gets it to De'Aaron Fox, who lobs it up for Winyan Gabriel. Freshman to freshman, cats up double digits. The Frosh keep it going. They swing it around. Fox goes to Gabriel in the corner. Another jumper. And then this time, as, as time expires in the half, Dominique Hawkins looking, finds Gabriel. And Gabriel again jams at home. He and Willis had 10 points each in the first half. Second half, check out the speed of Fox. Gets the rebound, goes up the court, dumps it to Malik Monk, and we're going to see him do this a lot this year. The freshman throws it down. One of Fox's 12 assists on the night. He also had 12 points. He breaks the assist record in a Kentucky debut. The Cats win it big, 87-64. Isaiah Briscoe led the way for UK with 17 points. Kentucky wins its season opener 87 to 64 here at Rep Arena against Stephen F. Austin. So the Cats are 1 0. And part of the reason why is the freshman point guard, De'Aaron Fox. He breaks the Kentucky debut assist record in the win over the Lumberjacks. Uh, we knew the change, I mean, how the change the rules. And uh, it's just, it's hard to adjust. I mean, coming from high school, you know, they didn't really call that all the time. So now if you put a hand on them or in the post, a lot of, I mean, guys are playing physical. So, uh, I mean, they call a lot of fouls. You just have to adjust and uh, play, play through it. The Aaron, the issue for he and Malik are defensively and rebounding. Now, we, I got on the Aaron and he started rebounding at the end of the game. He ended up with uh, uh, five rebounds, I think. Is that what he had? Four. Um, but Malik ends up with no rebounds? Come on. Come on, if you can put your head on the rim, you can go in and rebound the ball. A quick turnaround now for the basketball cats. They will take on Canisius here in Rupp Arena on Sunday in Lexington. Jamie McCracken, WYMT Mountain Sports. Fantastic stuff from Jamie. How about the women? Macy Morris, number 19, Kentucky, hosting number 14, Miami, to open the season. Tough game. Perimeter ball movement for the Cats leads to a three-point bucket by Mackenzie Can. Third three of the half for UK. Cats by seven. Evelyn Akator receives the ball high post, banks in the jumper from straightaway. Assist to Morris. Lead at five. How about the All-American? Cannot have a UK highlight without a Michaela Epps play. The finger roll finish in the lane for two. Lead out to seven. Epps again gets another screen, puts her hip on the defender, drives in another scoop and score. Kentucky by nine. And then Michaela Epps with the assist. The kick out to Akator. Akator nails the long jumper from just inside the arc. And then just before the half, Jessica Harden, the pump fake, drains the three at the buzzer. Kentucky gets the big win to open the year over number 14, Miami, 82-66 the final. Morris with 11 points for Kentucky. Epps with a game high, 29. Well, coming up, we turn our attention to the high school football state playoffs, and it all starts with our game of the week between Hazard and Williamsburg. Hazard and Williamsburg have played a few classic games in recent years. The two teams meeting tonight for the fifth time in the last six seasons. All five meetings coming in the playoffs. The Bulldogs and Yellow Jackets battling in Whitley County in our Appalachian Wireless Game of the Week. Williamsburg hosting Hazard. Winner moves on to the Class 1A Region 4 Final. Jacket strike first in the first. Alec Poor over the middle to Caleb Rose for the touchdown. PAT puts Willieburg up 7-0. Bulldogs answer with a long drive. Tenth play. Corey Smith punches it in from inside the five-yard line. Hazard ties things at seven. Jackets back at it. Poor rolling left, throws on the run, picked off by Sheck Nadai. Hazard takes over in Williamsburg territory. And that led to this. Another touchdown run by the big number 34. Smith across the goal line in for six. We go to the Highlands. Black and blue clinic scoreboard. Yellow Jackets led it 7-0 early as you saw, but after that it was all Bulldogs. Hazard advances to the region final 56-31 over Williamsburg, who would Hazard play next week in the region championship? 
Number nine, Pikeville. 49 to six winners were the Panthers tonight over the Pineville Mountain Lions. Pikeville beat Hazard in the regular season. We stick with Class A, Paintsville hosting Fairview. The Tigers looking to stay undefeated. Eagles get the interception here though against Darren Morris and that Paintsville offense, Dylan Romine with the INT. Back though comes Paintsville already up 13-0 and you can't have a Paintsville highlight without number one. Kent Phelps can't be stopped, gets popped in the end zone. Interesting play here, Tigers Jalen Allen with the pick. He fumbles it and then watch Romine. For Fairview, one elbow, the rump, other elbow, knee, all touched the ground, didn't hear the whistle, and he'll take it in for the score for Fairview. Painsville, though, too tough tonight because they got this guy, Phelps, in the backfield. Another long touchdown run for the Wofford commit. Tigers stay perfect as they knock off the Fairview Eagles. 49-14, Paintsville back in the region championship for a second consecutive year. To Class 2A, Leslie County native and former UK quarterback Tim Couch in attendance for the Eagles and Danville. Turnover bug biting the Admirals early. Zach Dampier picked off but in the red zone by Connor Bray. Nice diving attempt. And then Don Levy Harris puts it on the turf. Christopher Sebastian recovers for Leslie. However, both teams still scoreless in the second. Admirals, though, find the end zone first. Dampier pumps, throws deep to a wide open David Walker. PAT makes it 7-0 Danville. Eagles, though, would answer on their next possession with a similar play. Seth Melton deep to Tyler Dixon. And Dixon, number 33, strolls in for six. Touchdown, Leslie County. Danville led this one 14-10 at the break. Admirals, though, go on to win it 34-10, knocking the Eagles out of the playoffs for a second straight year. Danville will have a, another chance to knock off district rival Lexington Christian. The Eagles all over Somerset 47-14. Somerset did have a lead in this game. LCA 12-0. Again, they will host the Danville Admirals next week in the region final. Corbin and Bell County meeting down in Corbin. The Red Hounds. There's former Bell coach Wayne Mills coaching against his old team. First offensive play for Corbin. It's a hook and ladder. Cameron Sizemore to A.J. Moore. Flips it to Chase Estep. And Chase is off to the races, making a few guys miss. Stepping into the end zone for a Red Hound touchdown. Next drive, Sizemore throwing downfield this time. However, the Bell County defense steps up big. Picked off. So Bell County with some life. However, the Bobcat offense could not do much with the football. They would turn it over on downs with Bell. Corbin, though, going to the air again. Same play, size more to Caleb Mitchell this time. This one goes in for a touchdown. Number three, Corbin, no problem with rival Bell County. Redhounds on the region, on to the region final, 44 to eight over the Bobcats. We stay on the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard. Corbin, a rematch next week with district foe Casey County. 10 and, 10 and one are the Rebels. They knocked off Estill County tonight, 49. 21. How about number one Belfry? The second straight shutout in the playoffs. This one 61 nothing tonight over the Fleming County Panthers. Belfry 11 and one and they will host Russell next week in the region championship. The Red Devils knocked off Pike Central 56 14. Russell 10 and one on the season. More high school football playoff action to come as we continue with classes 4A and 5A, including a Mountain Top 10 showdown in Williamsburg as number 10 Whitley County welcomes in number 6 Pulaski County. Up to this point, the Whitley County Colonels have enjoyed their best season since winning a region championship back in 2008, which also happens to be the last time the Colonels played in a region final. Hi, I'm Kira. This is Pulaski County versus Whitley County. Pulaski County in Williamsburg for a matchup of Mountain Top 10 teams. Number six Maroons, number 10 Colonels right before halftime. Dylan Wilson finds Dawson Swain who high steps his way into the end zone. Maroons though by one at the half. Second half opening kickoff, a surprise onside from Pulaski and they get it. A few plays later, a controversial play. Wiley Kane to Jake Johnson. Fumble on the play. Whitley tries to pick it up, but it's on the ground again. Ball stays with Pulaski. They take advantage of the possession. Read option give to Dylan Hopkins. Touchdown. Later in the third, Dylan Wilson again drops back, throws a strike to Connor Hargis in the end zone. Tie game 28 all. 
Whitley County didn't know what was coming, but Jake knew. How about 36 yards? A touchdown to put Pulaski on top. Then you've already seen him once, but you can't have a Pulaski highlight without an offensive play from Jake Johnson. In for the touchdown for one of the state's all-time record holders. We go to the Highlands Black and Blue Clinic scoreboard. Number six, Pulaski marches on to the Class 5A Region 4 final. 41-28, the final tonight over number 10, Whitley County. Who would the Maroons play? Larry French and Southwestern hosting North Laurel. Warriors leading 20-7 at the break. Start of the third. Warriors march all the way down to the one-yard line with a big run by William Lemon. A couple of plays later, Trevor Brock takes it in 27 to 7 Southwestern. North Laurel's turn now. Cole McCorder searching in the backfield, but is picked off by Drew Sawyer. Southwestern defense helping out its offense at home versus the Jags. And of course, what does the offense do? Well, it capitalizes a one yard touchdown run by Patrick Edwards to make it 34 to 7 near the end of the third. And it's Southwestern that advances to the region championship. The final tonight in Somerset 41-21. Warriors win it and will play number six Pulaski County at the reservation next week. What so proudly we Class 4A, Rockcastle County honoring veterans tonight for their game against Mercer County. First quarter, we pick it up. Chase McClure finds Michael Tomlinson 60 plus yards all the way home. Seven nothing Rockets midway through the first. Couple drives later for Rock, Devin Robins Robinson pounds his way inside the five yard line. Same drive, it's Holden Barnett. He's on the ground, punches it into the end zone to make it 14 nothing Rockets at the end of the first. However, this one was a nail biter. Rockcastle County would tie the game at 24 24 with a field goal with nine seconds remaining in regulation. In overtime, Mercer County scored first to go up 31 24. Rockcastle scored on its possession, but elected to go for two and the win. The Titans held and Mercer County knocks off the Rockets 31 30 in overtime. Who would Mercer County play next week? East Jessamine hosting a second round playoff game for the first time ever, taking on Wayne County. First quarter, and it looks like East Jess is Kyle Gann going to score the touchdown. But wait, the officials call a hold, and well, the head coach doesn't agree. Three minutes left in the first. Wayne County's Lorenzo Lindsay connects to Stetson Simpson. A lot of alliteration on the Wayne County roster. Touchdown Cardinals 7 0. Then in the second, the Cardinals strike again with German Ruiz getting the score. Wayne County back to the region final. The Cardinals no problem tonight with the Jaguars of East Jessamine. 41 20, the final. Also in Class 4A, honoring veterans at Johnson Central, Golden Eagles hosting the Greenup County Musketeers. Eagles on the board first. Our reigning player of the week, Joe Jackson. Stepping over the defender for the score. Pretty easy touchdown later on. Greenup trying to get something going. Cade Warnick with the nice reception over the middle. This one was all Johnson Central though. Noah Frisbee makes the great catch for the first down inside the red zone. And then who do you give it to for Johnson Central? How about Jackson? Joe Jackson, another rushing touchdown. Golden Eagles rolled the Musketeers of Greenup 55-8, the final in Paintsville. So who does Johnson Central play next week? Bourbon County welcoming in Ashland. The winner travels to Paintsville next week. In the third quarter, Ashland threatening from the one yard line. Iraq Colburn dives over the pile but loses the ball. However, it's recovered by Daniel Haberlin for the Ashland touchdown. 23 6 Tomcats following a three and out by Bourbon. Braxton Ratliff rolls right, throws a laser to Marcus Lazier in the end zone, extending the Ashland lead. And the Tomcats will get a second chance at the Golden Eagles. 43-13, the final in Paris over the Bourbon County Colonels. Much more to come on the Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime. But as we go to break, here's a look at the season's final Alice Lloyd College Mountain Top 10. Time now for our student athlete of the week. 
Jacob Hilton is a senior at North Laurel High School where he has a 3.97 grade point average. He is a member of the Beta Club, Link Crew, and Crowd Club, and is a member of the Jaguar soccer team. Congratulations, Jacob, our student athlete of the week. How about some Long John Silvers? Time now for our catch of the day. We go back out to Hyden and look at the effort by Connor Bray of Leslie County. Dives in front of the intended receiver from Danville, bobbles the ball, then pulls it in for the interception. Take another look at it. The Eagles would fall, though, to the Admirals 34-10. But Connor Bray providing us with tonight's Long John Silvers catch of the day. Time now for the Saturday slate as we get you set for this weekend's action. Sponsored all season long by Union College. Following Kentucky's loss to Georgia last weekend, head coach Mark Stoops said he did not see the fight in his players' eyes. Well, tomorrow afternoon, the Wildcats will need to find a lot of fire down in Knoxville, a place they have not won since 1984. Tennessee has lost three of its last four games, but regardless of the Vol situation, Stoops believes his guys will come out ready to play. Team will be fine. We'll be, we'll be ready to go. They'll be back to work, I'm sure. They've been resilient, and uh, they'll bounce back. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. Don't ever quit your cattle on a stormy night. <laughs> Never heard that before. Kentucky will try and slow down Joshua Dobbs in the Tennessee offense this weekend in Knoxville. Game time tomorrow set for 12 o'clock noon on the SEC Network. The Wildcats are 5-4 and four, looking for that elusive sixth win. Tennessee already bolt eligible at 6-3. and three. Kentucky again has not won a game in Knoxville since 1984. Well, that does it for tonight's show. Region championships on the line next week. Jamie McCracken back on the set tomorrow for Sports Overtime Saturday night. Until then, thank you for watching. Have a good night.